Hi everyone, thanks for coming to our presentation on music therapy. Today we're going to give you just a general overview of music therapy and healthcare. So whether you've worked with us before, seen us in the hallways, or never heard of us, uh, thanks for coming to learn more about what we do at, at VCU Health. So just to introduce ourselves, my name is Brooke Cable. I've been here for about a year and a half and I'll let my coworkers introduce them too. My name is Melissa Owens. Uh, I've been here for approximately, this is my 18th year. And I'm Molly Luck, and I have been at VCU Health since around 2016. All right, so we wanted to start just by telling you what music therapy is in a general sense. So the simple answer is using music intentionally and therapeutically to address non-musical goals. So our goals are never to make someone a better musician or to teach them an instrument or teach them to sing. While those things may just happen as a result of lots of the music therapy sessions, our goals are never to create better musicians. So we'll talk a little bit more about what our goals are later, but they're never musical goals. So music therapy is clinical and evidence-based. So there's a lot of research that shows that music therapy helps patients in the hospital with a variety of things. But during the sessions, we set goals for patients, and during the sessions, we're looking for measurable outcomes. Music therapy sessions are also individualized, so no two music therapy sessions look alike. We completely tailor the session to the needs and preferences of the patient. So we often get asked, what kind of music do y'all do in music therapy sessions? Well, we never really know until we meet the patient. We always do patient preferred music, and we see that the best results come from music that the patient enjoys. So music therapy also happens by a credentialed professional. So it's not music therapy unless a music therapist is present. And we'll talk a little bit more about what is a credential music therapy professional later. But we'll go ahead and talk about what music therapy is not. So music therapy is not playing recorded music for a client, patient, or family member. It's not playing an instrument for a client, patient, or family member. It's not listening to the music that we sometimes have in Gateway. As wonderful as those things are, and as meaningful, as important as those things are, we say it's not music therapy unless the music therapist is present. So what happens in a music therapy session? So our number one goal is to always meet the patient where they are. We never know what's gonna happen in a session until we show up. So say that one day the patient is feeling really good, really active, really engaged, doesn't mean that they'll be the same way the next day as we know happens in the hospital. So we always assess how they're feeling at the beginning of the session and then proceed from there. We have to be really good at improvising and being able to meet their needs um, within the session. So some things that we might do is create music. So some people like to write their own songs, experiment with different instrument sounds, creating live music is something that patients really enjoy. Sometimes we move within a session. So we get referrals sometimes for patients who are encouraged to get out of the bed, but they don't want to. So we can use an instrument to help them work on moving their hands, moving their feet, getting their arms moving. It's really encouraging to use music to help them to get moving. Sometimes the patient just wants to engage in music listening. So we can provide music for them using a guitar, keyboard, voice. Sometimes if they're really anxious, having a hard time falling asleep, we can provide music to help them get to their desired state. You'll hear a lot of singing in music therapy sessions if you're walking by. Patients enjoy singing. Um, getting them to express themselves through song is not something they often get to do in a hospital environment. So we encourage a lot of singing. Help boost self-esteem, boost mood. Um, we also love it when families get involved. So hearing your child sing, if your child's in the hospital, really um, helps the family cope with being in that environment and creates more of a positive atmosphere. So I'm gonna turn it over to Melissa to talk about some main goal areas in music therapy sessions. So I'm gonna talk a little bit about the main goals of music therapy. Although it's difficult to say uh, with each specific patient what the goals might be, um, I'll try to just give an overview of some of the goals that we work on. Uh, goals are, of course, different depending on the demographic of the patients that we're working with. Um, some of our goals are physical in nature. So when we talk about the physical goal areas that we might work on in music therapy, 
Um, I want to make sure that it's clear uh, that we are not professing to be physical therapists or occupational therapists, but we do our best to collaborate with other professionals and help address some of those goals uh, in support of the patient while they are working on a specific goal. So for instance, if, if in one of their therapies they are working on increasing their upper extremity strength, we can um, choose a musical instrument for them that might be weighted or might have a little bit more heft to it so that the patient can actually work on those goals um, that they're working on with other therapists also within our sessions. Um, also music lends itself very well to movement of all different kinds. And so we might incorporate dance, we might incorporate other types of movement um, using scarves or ribbons or things like that to encourage our patients to participate. Um, but again, it really just depends on what uh, the patient needs are and what uh, the goal areas are that we create and also those that the other team members create. Um, emotional goals are other goals that we work on very consistently in our work as music therapists. Obviously, when people are in the hospital facing illness or trauma or disease, uh, that brings with it a lot of emotional uh, challenges. And so one of the things that we like to do with music is uh, empower patients to be able to express their selves, themselves through music, um, using music perhaps to write a song, uh, to express those emotions that they're feeling. Sometimes they might want to even play out that emotion on an instrument in order to be able to better express themselves. But music is really wonderful for addressing um, emotional needs as well. Uh, cognitively, we can also address certain things during music therapy. We can work on uh, impulse control. We can work on um, things like memory making, self-awareness, all of those sorts of things that also kind of move a little bit into the social area as well. Working on turn taking, working on uh, things within a group context for communication and also for collaborating with other people. So now I'll talk a little bit about what music therapy at VCU Health actually looks like. So this is a service that's provided to all inpatient units by referral. Uh, it is available to all units. That doesn't mean that we work on every unit every day or even every week, but we do provide services to any unit that feels they have a patient that might benefit from music therapy. Uh, we also work in some of the outpatient clinics providing services when uh, patients that we've worked with as inpatients come in for their outpatient appointments as well. Um, we are very uh, cognizant of the fact that interdisciplinary collaboration is important to what we do. Um, we feel that we can work very well with the other professionals within the health system and we try to work together the best we can to help meet the goals of the patient. So another thing about music, um, that people might not realize we do as music therapists is we can adapt music. We can adapt it to make um, patients successful uh, no matter what their uh, physical or cognitive level is. Um, we are able to adapt instruments, literally making instruments able to be held when maybe they don't have strength in a particular hand or maybe they don't have a use of both hands. Um, we are able to um, hopefully make music therapy sessions accessible enough that no matter what it is a patient wants to do, we find a way to make it happen for that patient. So whether it be adapting the physical environment that we are in or adapting the instruments itself, uh, we want to make sure that whatever way a patient wants to engage, uh, we are able to help them do that through different adaptations. One of the best things about music therapy at VCU is that music therapy is a free service. It is not billed to patients. It's a service that the hospital um, offers to patients for free. Uh, and it is not only for patients, but staff can also benefit in many ways from music therapy. Uh, sometimes staff are actually in the groups with us or in sessions in individual patient rooms. And they comment that they benefit from the either relaxation qualities of music or the uplifting qualities of music. So we are, very happy that what we do is able to meet needs of not only patients, but also staff and even family members that are, are with the patient at the time of the service. So as I mentioned earlier, uh, we do enjoy interdisciplinary work at VCU Health. Uh, many of the referrals 
we receive come from our colleagues in other disciplines, uh, whether that be speech therapy, physical therapy, occupational therapy, um, therapeutic recreation, uh, chaplains, dogs on call, um, also uh, working with nurses or other staff for procedural support. So it's very important to us to not only uh, work with the patients, but to be able to work collaboratively with our fellow employees to be able to help make their job easier and help the patients perhaps reach their goals um, more quickly or in a way that is easier for the patient because music is also involved. As I said, we also work with uh, some nurses uh, and other staff members when they are uh, providing a procedure for a patient and they might need some extra support through music therapy. One of the other departments with whom we work is the child life department. We receive a great deal of referrals from them. They are really um, firsthand um, with patients getting that information about what the patients enjoy, what the patients need, why the patient is in the hospital, and it's really a benefit to us to work collaboratively well with child life. In addition, we work with social workers and chaplains and, and other members of the team. So now I'm going to talk a little bit about the music therapy evaluation process. So once we actually get referrals, what do we decide to do and how do we approach the situation? So for those of you who might be referring patients to us in the future, it's always helpful for you to know what information you might want to include in the referral process. So always helpful is the reason for referral. So what made you think of music therapy as something that might benefit the patient? We also think about barriers to treatment. What are some things that the patient is dealing with that we might want to make more accessible or make some adaptations for? So what's also important to know is what kind of precautions the patient might have, not only for uh, precautions like droplet precautions or airborne precautions, but also if there's anything that we need to be on the lookout for physically, something that the patient might not be able to do at the moment. So other considerations might include if you met the patient and if you have some, some information about them personally, some things that, what kind of music they like, what they enjoy to do, what their hobbies are, what, what times of day they might seem a little bit more receptive to something like music therapy. So also verbal and nonverbal communication. While music therapy isn't necessarily something that we, we must have a patient who is verbal, it's always good for us to know what kind of communication the patient uses. So whether it is verbal or whether it's sign language or whether it is gestural communication, it's always helpful to know. So also physical responses to music. We think about the positive physical responses, but also if you've noticed that the patient becomes overwhelmed or if they become overstimulated, those are things that are good for us to know as well. Their functional motor skills, their psychosocial skills, and all of these things you don't have to know offhand, but it's always whatever, whatever information we have to prepare us and to gear us is always better when we approach the client or the patient and it makes it easier for us to serve them the best that we can. So also self-expression. If you've seen the patient and you know that there are certain things that they express themselves, certain ways that they express themselves, their preferred music. Again, that's something that we try to lean on heavily because the most effective music is gonna be something that the patient enjoys. And then also finally a recommended treatment focus. So that kind of goes back to the reason for referral. What made you think about music therapy and what do you see that can benefit the patient in the process of music therapy? So why music therapy? So I'm sure everybody's heard the quote, music is a universal language, and most of us know that to be true. No matter what actual language we speak or just where we are in our life, music is something that we all share and we all have memories of music from the time that we're young until end of life. So it's something that goes with us throughout our whole life. And also music therapy allows for music to be varied to fit the client or the patient. As all of us have touched on, music therapy is something that's individualized. We are always focused on meeting the patient where they are. And music can foster communication, 
continuity of culture, expression, motivation. It facilitates full brain engagement, normalization, and transfers to reality. So among that list, maybe we're thinking first about communication. Again, as I said, our whole life we've had music around and think about little ones in your life who don't even have developed speaking language yet. But in something like music, they're able to communicate with us in a different way. Or even people who have experienced a stroke. We know that sometimes people have lost certain verbal functioning and, and linguistic functioning. But if we're able to communicate in different ways, that patient feels so much more successful and also feels so much more seen when we find ways to help the patient express themselves and communicate in non-conventional ways. So also, uh, we like to think about normalization of the hospital environment. So even those of us who work in the hospital know that it's a lot different than the world outside of the hospital. And when you're a patient, if you've been there, especially, I mean, no, no matter how long you've been there, it's a very different experience and sometimes a traumatic experience. And so something that's familiar, something like music, it really can help kind of transport your mind and help you forget that for those few moments you are experiencing a lot of stress or experiencing a lot of worry or not knowing what's going on. But for those few moments, you can kind of normalize what's going on and feel something familiar. So. Music therapy affects more than just the patient. We are always happy to see just the patient, but we know that those, the effects of music therapy carry over past when our session is over. So if you think about in the hospital, we have the patient and then those who are related to the patient or around the patient, the patient's family and friends, and then those who work with the patient. So this is just nurses and physicians, but we know how many people come in contact with a patient every day. It's a significant number. And if that patient is experiencing a lot of anxiety and stress, agitation, if they're just lacking structure, it affects everybody who is seeing that patient all day. And while we can't fix everything, there are certain things that we can do in music therapy to help make the patient's well-being uh, improve. And so that makes the job easier of other medical professionals and then also the patient's family and friends. The amount of load of emotional labor and, and things like that can be decreased even if just slightly. So then beyond just those people who come in contact with the patient, we think about the patient family medical interactions. When we have some positive interactions with the patient in music therapy, sometimes the family members who are especially stressed, if there's some distrust with the medical team, understandably sometimes because it's a very new situation, when we find ways that we can make the patient's family a little bit more comfortable or make it feel like that patient is being seen as an individual that can help everybody involved. And then when we just think about anybody and everybody beyond that, we see that every interaction counts and every interaction that can improve the, the stay for the patient, the well-being for the patient, decrease the stress for the nurses in, engaged with the patient. And also, I'm sure many of you are familiar with the patients who are always asking you to be there every moment of the day. And even when there's maybe 30 minutes to an hour where a patient is engaged in something actively, that allows our nursing staff and the rest of the medical staff to take time to focus on other things that they need to do. So lastly, we're gonna talk about who can call themselves a music therapist. There's a lot of misconceptions here, so we want everybody to be informed about what our education and background is. So in order to become a music therapist, it starts in an undergraduate program. Currently in Virginia, we have Radford University and Shenandoah University who have approved music therapy undergraduate programs. And I say approved because it's very important that those programs are approved by the American Music Therapy Association. 
So during our undergraduate studies, we also take courses like psychology and anatomy, so we can best prepare ourselves to understand the full human experience. After our undergraduate studies, we then have a six month internship. So just like the approved music therapy uh, schools, we have to have an approved music therapy internship. And I myself actually was an intern at VCU Health in January 2016. And then we were lucky enough to have Brooke come join us as an intern. So we're pretty partial to VCU Health as an internship site. And then once you finish your six month internship, there's the board certification exam for the certificate from the certification board of music therapists. And then finally, after passing your certification exam, throughout your career as a music therapist, you must complete continuing education courses. And then along with our undergraduate programs, Shenandoah University and Radford University both include graduate programs, and you can get your master's and your doctorate in music therapy. So as we bring this presentation to a close, uh, one of the most important things we want to let you know is how to contact us. Um, the three of us are in our office, uh, not very often, but we certainly can take messages. The number there is 804-827-9962. You can also email us individually or as a group uh, at the email addresses you see on your screen. We look forward to hearing from you.